Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson, the fourth topic in Chapter 8, Information Processing Model. As always, we'll stick to the Cambridge exam syllabus exactly, so you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know. Our learning objectives today are to identify the four stages of the information processing model, to apply the model to a physical activity, and to explain what is meant by limited channel capacity and single channel hypothesis. In order to be successful in sport, you need to be able to process information from your environment and make good decisions based on that information. Information can be received via the eyes, ears, skin and muscles and successful athletes are able to select only the most relevant pieces and respond quickly and effectively. In order to better understand the decision-making process in sport, we need to refer to the information processing model which has four separate stages. The first is the input stage, and this is where information is received via the senses. A great deal of information may be received, so the performer must select the most important information to focus on. Next is the decision-making stage, where the information is analysed and a decision is made. Experienced performers are likely to make faster and better decisions as they face similar situations many times before and have stored these experiences in their long-term memories. Next comes the output stage where the decision is acted upon. The brain sends information to the muscles via a network of neurons, the muscles contract and the action is performed. The final stage is the feedback stage and this is where information about the performance and outcome of the skill is received. If the decision turned out to be a bad one, for example, the decision would be stored in the memory, helping the performer to avoid making a similar decision in the future. It's important to note here that feedback is only stored in the long-term memory with frequent and sustained practice, and elite athletes have usually practiced so much that their decisions are almost immediate. Now let's move on to our second learning objective, which is to apply the information processing model to an example from sport, which in this case is taking a penalty kick. Input. The player receives information from their surroundings, but focuses only on the most important bits, including the ball, pitch, goalkeeper, and the goal itself. Decision making. The player notices that the goalkeeper is positioned left of center and decides to shoot to the more open right side. Output. The skill is executed and a goal is scored. Feedback. The player receives feedback from a variety of sources, including the crowd, coach, teammates, the feel of the movement and the sight of the ball hitting the net, all of which tell him that he was successful. As a result, he'll be more likely to make the same decision when faced with a similar situation in the future. Now we're already on our final learning objective, which is to understand three terms that relate to our ability to process information in sport. Limited channel capacity is the idea that our brains can only process a certain amount of information at once and that too much information can cause overload and confusion. For example, when a boxer steps into the ring, the camera flashes and crowd noise may distract them from their opponent and obscure their focus. There are two different takes on this limited channel idea, the single channel and multi-channel hypotheses. The single channel hypothesis suggests that we're only capable of processing one piece of information at once, and until one has been dealt with, another cannot be acted upon. The multi-channel hypothesis, by comparison, suggests that the brain has multiple channels, each of which is dedicated to a different task. This would mean that visual information from the actions of an opponent and auditory information from a teammate's instructions can be processed concurrently, allowing athletes to make decisions that take more information into account. Now you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 8.4, the information processing model. Why not compare what you know to the knowledge checklist and come back next time for topic 8.5 on the stages of learning. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.